Now, a new environmental project aims to restore peatlands in Scotland and cut the UK's CO2 emissions by more than 200 million tonnes. The Peatland Code, which would also protect rare wildlife, was unveiled this morning at the World Forum for National Capital in Edinburgh. Well, joining me now is Professor Mark Reid from Birmingham City University, who led the research. Good evening. Good evening. Well, tell us more then about your conclusions. So our conclusions are that peatlands are a majorly overlooked habitat. They're incredibly important in Scotland in particular and globally for climate change and water and wildlife. But many of them are very badly damaged. There's not enough money to fix them. So we're now collaborating between government and industry so that we can provide the level of funding required to meet this enormous challenge. What sort of things do you actually have to do then to preserve them? Peatlands uh, have been degraded in a number of ways. So there were government grants to drain peat bogs to make them more productive. It didn't work. So part of this is about blocking up those drainage ditches. In places where there have been wildfires, for example, there are just huge areas of bare and eroding peat, uh, giving off carbon, uh, polluting the water, and a, a desert for wildlife. And so it's about revegetating and stabilising those peat slopes. They act as a huge store for carbon, don't they? Absolutely. Um, Three billion tonnes of carbon. So to put that into perspective, that's uh, the same amount of carbon that is stored in all the forests of the UK and France and Germany combined. How do you actually, though, cut the UK's CO2 emissions doing all this? So fundamentally, we have to reduce our emissions by cutting them at source. Any form of carbon sequestration will only ever buy us time. So the climate mitigation benefits of this are real and they are quantifiable. But this is about us working together with businesses who care about climate and are doing their bit to reduce emissions at source first before they're then considering looking at options such as this to then uh, collaborate for the climate and these other uh, added benefits. And if we're talking about cutting emissions by more than 200 million tonnes, you know, where is that in the scale of emissions? So to put it into perspective, uh, the over 80% of our peatlands are degraded in this country. If just 5% uh, more become damaged to the extent that we see today, that's equivalent to uh, an entire year of uh, greenhouse gas emissions from the whole of the UK economy. And we've talked in the lead in there about restoring peatlands in Scotland. Is it only in Scotland then? So this is a problem uh, all over the world. Scotland can play an incredibly important role because... Uh, they cover 20% of the, the land area in Scotland. That's 60% of the UK's total peat. That actually represents 15% of the global peat bog uh, resource. So getting it right in Scotland is important for the whole of the world. Where is the money going to come from for this? Is it going to be expensive? It is expensive, and this is the problem. So there is uh, some money. Uh, Scottish government have been particularly proactive in putting money uh, forward. Nicholas Sturgeon at the launch uh, this morning talked about the, the value of natural capital to Scottish government and why Scottish government have been investing in this. But the scale of the problem is far greater than this. And to meet that magnitude of scale, we need to work with the private sector as well. And so the Peatland Code enables us to provide companies with quantifiable benefits in terms of the carbon and uh, climate benefits, as well as the water and biodiversity benefits that they can talk about to their customers and their clients. Uh, and then by adding their funding into this pot, Together, we can really make the kind of difference that we need to if we want to protect these habitats for the future, uh, uh, both for Scotland and inter internationally in terms of the role that they play in climate regulation. People might, you know, like the aim here, you know, it, as an idea, but when it hits them in the pocket, that's always the problem, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you're talking to, to businesses, there's a lot of enthusiasm. Uh, we're here at the Natural uh, Capital Conference uh, in Edinburgh, uh, a whole range of different companies from many different sectors, all talking about how essential it is for them as companies to uh, recognise the extent to which they rely on nature, uh, whether that's uh, water uh, or agricultural commodities. Uh, if we don't pay attention to natural capital down our supply chains, then we may well not have a business 10 years from now. So there's a growing recognition that we need to pay attention to our natural capital and invest in that natural capital if we want to have sustainable and profitable businesses for the long term. Okay, well, thank you very much for speaking to us this evening. Professor Mark Reid there from Birmingham City.
92 to 95 FM, 810 Medium Wave and on digital radio, BBC Radio Scotland.